Hello and welcome to Let's Program, the timeline program with Sient here, because I forgot to say my name last time. This is part two. And uh, we were just about to uh, add a little bit of a thingy here uh, to make life a little bit easier. So this is going to be an abstract, public abstract. I'm not sure if the order matters on these. Um, control, whoop, no, I just want... Uh, excuse me, system.windows.forms.control. Uh, get control. Cool. Uh, and then we can go over here and we can go override get control. Okay. Uh, apparently it decided to just automatically add that there. Uh, so I can get rid of that whole mess. Um, that's an interesting piece of functionality. Um, so this is going to be real unhappy with me, but that's because I've not set up for how to do a split timeline just yet. So a split timeline is going to need to do a couple of things that are a little bit more complicated, but I'll do that when I um, make the adding event functionality. So. What I need right now, however, is I need a new control. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, instead of adding a new controller, let's add a new folder. And we're going to call this event controls. So this is, uh, I don't need all these things open. So this is where I'm going to put my uh, new user control for a split timeline control. Okay, so split timeline control is going to need to have something to do with split timelines. Um, so let's start by giving it our control light and a border style of, I'm just going to do a fixed single. Um, okay. So for this control, what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a split timeline owner, and I'm going to make a split timeline uh, owning timeline. Um, sure. We'll actually call it owning split timeline equals null. And then owning split timeline equals owner. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and change this to internal. And uh, this will do stuff based on that. But, you know, for right now, we're, we're good. So uh, then we can come back to is it event. And we can put return a new split timeline uh, control. Why are you not? Oh, right. It's... Let's just go ha ahead and add using uh, timeline dot event controls. Split timeline control. Uh, because I put it in a new folder, it puts it in a sub namespace, which is something that I'd forgotten. OK. Now that will allow me to be able to, when I make a new event, I can just call get control, and it will get me the appropriate control. Uh, also, because event base is abstract, I can't actually make an event base. But I can make things that come off of it. So let's make a class. Um, now, I don't know that I need more event types than these, but I definitely wanted to be able to have some sort of split timeline functionality. Uh, so let, let me think about a little bit how I want to do this too because i think it's going to be sorry about the microphone there i think it's going to be really important um so let's just make a st whoop. standard event event base whoops event base um and then this can just have the override uh why are you, uh, get control there we go and then this will need to have, eventually have a thing too um control a k f for some formatting so um 
This is, let's just give this public string um, event. Uh, it doesn't need description. Okay. So um, when I'm looking at the timeline control, this is where my brain was going. When I'm looking at this, I need to be able to note whether or not this is a timeline that's been split or not, because I want to have an additional toggle that I can implement somewhere. Um, so I've got a bajillion things open right now, but let's go back to this guy. Because something that, whoa, I had to reload stuff there. Something that I'm going to want to do is, um, let's see, I'm going to call this add event. I want that to be Alt A. Yeah, Alt A seems good. Um, so this is just a spot where I'm going to manually be able to enter in each type. So I'm just going to call a standard event. Um, let's just go that. So you go Alt A E and it adds a standard event, and then uh, split timeline. Um, put an ampersand there. So what I want to happen is when you double click standard event, it will do that. And when you double click that, it'll do that. Um, now, what I need, so here's the, the thing that's kind of interesting about this is um, I think I'm going to want to go into events. So event base, and I'm going to want to add a public string name equal unnamed event. So by default, an event is unnamed. And by default, it happens at the start of time. Water break. <sighs> Water is delicious. Uh, very important to keep hydrated. OK. So when I do this, and when I do this, OK. So this is the part where things get a little bit wonky, or, or will be getting a little bit wonky. Um, so when I add a split timeline, I need to uh, access current timeline and add a tab for the split timeline. OK. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. Just thinking through through some of the things I'm going to need to be able to do for this. Um, so I'm going to want to have uh, a couple pieces of data. I'm going to want to have string current file name. Let's just make this that. Um, let's make a private. private um, Timeline main timeline is a new timeline. Okay, and then let's go in here and let's go um, main timeline control uh, dot. Why are you not showing me the things that this thing has? Uh, it is a no, I should have um whatever dot timeline equals main timeline. I don't know what well, every now and then IntelliSense is like bro, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. And uh just royally does nothing, which is always obnoxious. Okay, so now we're gonna assign that to timeline and then resize it. Um, I might need, because I might need to respond to the resize event there. So I kind of want to make sure, eh, actually, strictly speaking, it probably does not matter the, the order um, that I do this in. So let's just go ahead and put it down here. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, but handle sizing functionality um, assign our main timeline. Okay, so at this point in time, I need to determine a very important piece of information, 
which is what am I uh, or am I going to have um, basically for lack of a better word am I going to have um, tracking for whether or not data has been changed because if I'm going to do that at this point in time I should begin working that into everywhere uh, because that's what you have to do if you're going to be tracking data change. Like tracking data change is actually a very non-trivial task because basically your data is always a thing that you you need to be tracking whether or not it's it's changed. So um, probably probably the way that I would do this would just be come down here. And um, make a uh, internal static class um, data state um, internal bool um, saved equals true by default, and this needs to be a static internal bool. Okay, so this variable right here, I can just access it from anywhere um, very easily. And so what I want to do is I want to have a function that I add to this. I'm just going to throw it down here. And I'm going to call this um, private void save data. Um, Okay, I'm just going to do this. And then this is going to do um, save the timeline. Okay, so the way that this is going to work is I need a using system dot system dot io. Okay, well, system dot io. And then um, here's my save data function. I'm going to want to make a Binary writer. So here's an argu or here's um another decision point. So how are we going to save our data? There's basically, as far as I'm concerned, there's two real ways of doing this. You can either save it in some sort of text file, uh, text style where it's you can human read the resulting file. Uh, it'll be bulkier, um, and you have to parse it back, which can be obnoxious. Um, or you can write it in binary, which basically means if you want to look inside the file, you have to know the file format and hex information. So, um, but it also, like, and if you save it in a text format, you can edit it external to this program as well. You can just open it up in, like, a text editor um, and just do whatever you want to it and then save it back again. Um... I personally like to save things in binary files because it's easier for me on the saving things end. Uh, and Well, saving things end is actually fairly comparable, but it's easier on me on the reading in end because the, the file format doesn't need to handle parsing. Uh, it turns out parsing text is a gigantic pain in the rear end. Um, there's probably tools that could help me with like saving it in an XML format, uh, and I could probably do some sort of like XML writer and XML reader in fact, I bet those exist. Yeah, XML, well, there's this stuff dealing with XML. Um, but I'm going to just use a binary writer, and I'm going to just save this in a binary file format. Um, again, like, there's different merits to doing both methods. Um, but binary definitely has the downside that it can be a lot harder to like do anything with your files outside like um actually if i pop this open you'll note over here i have a program called hex editor um it's 1632 uh 16 because hexadecimal and then 32 because 32 bit program probably but that is a program that that's a hex editor so i and it's something that i've used to actually hack my own data files when i've screwed things up in them or whatever um, but that's how you have to do it if you want to, like, by hand edit things. I 
generally am, am fine with uh, doing this. Um, actually, something else that I should do now that I'm thinking about it is um, I should support opening with this, but I'll do that in a, I'll I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so I like to call uh, binary writers out uh, any sort of writer and output and any sort of reader and input. It's just a convention that I have. Um, and then this is going to be file dot create um, current file name, and then do the writing, and then uh, output dot close. Always close your file management stuff. If you don't, you'll find that you get access errors and it is a giant pain in the rear end. So always do that. Um, the other thing though that I want to do with this is I want to go data state dot saved equals true. Because when you save it, it um, saves it, theoretically. Uh, and if it doesn't, then you've done something wrong. Okay. So I also want to go over here and I want to go using system.io. Um, I want to add a public void uh, save binary writer output. Okay, so this is then is going to need to do a um, for each event base event. Uh, I'm just going to call it e in events. And then, so what you're going to see here is I'm about to, to daisy chain this. And this is something that's very, very, very useful. So um, something else, actually, that's, that's critically important that I absolutely need to do is if I go over, where is form one? Um, the very first thing you should always, always, always do version number. So, anecdote time. I have written a number of tools for uh, vernacular games, which is a um, an, an indie game studio that I uh, part-time work for, basically. And uh, for our first game, Highway to the Moon, I, I wrote a bunch of tools, but it was, well, like, I was still kind of getting my feet on some of the, um, like, we we're all pretty new to some extent. Like, we'd done game making but what we were trying to do specifically was a bit more ambitious than anything we'd done previously um because we'd done some game making in college but anyway so i was making some c-sharp tools uh similar to what i've been doing with this is where i kind of uh, got some of my footing um i'd done some initial like figuring stuff out on my own then uh went to work with them and um started making tools for our first game highway to the moon which we that's that's the story for another time in another place. There's a podcast on it. Just search, I don't know, vernacular games. Search out our YouTube channel, and there's uh, we did a whole podcast series on making Highway to the Moon. But um, those tools did not generally have version numbers in them, and for the files, and that makes a gigantic headache if you need to, if you have a bunch of files, and you're like, you know what, I want to add some functionality to this program, it requires me changing the save file format. Uh, if you don't have a way of being able to support versions, then you're going to try to, th then you're going to have to do this like weird half step, where you update the save functionality, then you go read in all of your files with the old load functionality, then save them with the new save functionality. And this is just a giant headache. It's terrible. Moral of the story is have version numbers, support loading your old versions. It will save you a ton of headache. Um, okay, so that's enough on uh, avoiding headaches. So version numbers, super important on to, to write out when you're saving. Um, I'm just leaving it like this because this is the only spot where it should ever write it out. So magic number here is okay. Um, generally, you want to avoid them, but here it's okay. Okay, so I also want to use using system.io here. Now, as you might guess, okay, 
Now all of these will make a save function, which is going to save these speci specific things. Um, now, this is actually, so what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna do something slightly more complicated because I have some information that I know I'm always gonna need. Um, and let's just actually go over here and do this as well. Um, so I'm gonna add a saving to this using system.io. Wow, that is not how you type IO at all. Okay. Um, public void save binary writer output uh, and then output writer raw value. Okay, so that's what this thing looks like. Um, but if we go back to event, you'll notice I have a date and a name in every single event. Like I've added them to the base of this for a reason, right? So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna leave this, but I'm going to change it from public to protected and from save to underscore save. And the reason for that will become apparent imminently. Um, why is this, an, oh right, it needs to be protected. So protected stuff, uh, if you're not familiar, can be seen um, from anything that basically uh, inherits from it. So um, all of the event bases can see protected, but nothing outside of the um, event base family tree can see underscore save. So the reason why I'm doing this is because then I can come in here and I can go output.write name and um, date.save output. And then I can go save output. And what this will do is this will call the children, the appropriate child save, uh, but, or at least it should anyway, that's the way it's worked in the past. But the, the key critical thing here is it will allow me to be able to not have to include these two lines in every single one of these that I add. I can just, like right here, what information does this have? Well, it has timeline, right? Dot save. And now the timeline save gets recursively called for each um, split timeline. But, uh, so that's how that works. And then over here, I'm going to override this again, and this is going to write out the description. Okay, so now what I've got is I've got a couple of um, events that I can save, and the whole thing will be hunky-dory. Now I need to go back to my timeline, because what I need to go here is save. Uh, something else that I ought to do, remember to include all of your stuff, folks is I need to uh, write events.count. Because I need to write out how many events I have. Uh, now, there are kind of ways around this, but trust me when I say there's not actually a way around it with the split split um, timeline thing. Because I need to know how many events to read in. Uh, and that's, that's why I need to write out how many events there are. So I'm not gonna worry about the reading functions yet because saving timelines is one thing reading them is another um, like you don't really have both without both but I'm not gonna I want to kind of figure out how many things I want to add so I can just kind of make a simple timeline and then save it um, so this is getting me kind of a starting spot I need to add another one of these uh, another user control for a Standard event control. Okay, now standard event control is going to need to have similar things to this. So I'm just going to do that same sort of thing over here. Um, standard event, owning event equal null, standard event owner, and then owning event equal owner cool beans, uh, and then I need to make this internal, whoop, not an interface, internal 
to make all of that happy. Then we can go back to events and this guy can whoa, I don't oh I hit insert. Um so like something insert, control insert, something like that. Basically does control paste. Um uh let's see. So this needs to be new standard event control this. Because that's what this is. Standard event. Okay, cool. Um, so these events are eventually going to need to do a bunch of all sorts of fancy stuff. But for right now, I'm done with this, so I'm going to close that. Because uh, I've got enough things open as it is. So standard events um, are going to need some stuff. But something else that I'm going to want, and I'm going to add it over here. User control. And this is going to be a timeline date control. Okay. And I need this because I need a way of being able to specify. Whoa! What? Okay. This apparently decided to look different. Um, thanks. Why? Okay. Well, never minding that weirdness. Um, I want a group box. I'm going to make it a nice little group box. Precious little group box. We'll adjust it a little bit more. Uh, and I'm just going to write date there. And like everything is visually weird, and I don't know why. OK, not going to worry about it. Numeric up down. I'm just going to call this raw date. So minimum is going to be 0, because you can't start beyond before like when you began. That makes sense. Um, maximum, I'm just going to put um, a really big number here, like 9999999. That, that's what? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, it can support that. Whatever. Um, in fact, what we can do is let's. So um, this actually brings up a really good point. So what I can do right now, because I think it might be a good idea, and it's very easy to uh, to sort of do, I suppose, um, is I could potentially change that around a little bit. Uh, OK, so I'm just going to do this for now. Um, I'm going to take a raw date and I'm going to set maximum equal to int dot max value. And, and the reason for that is because that's the maximum value that can be stored in it and that's what we're using. However, in the future, I might change this to be a decimal and then allow fractional values. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now. So. Uh, I'm looking over at the timer. And it looks like we're nearing the, uh, the end of our current time, but that's okay. I'm going to throw down a build real quick. And, oh, what now? Um, Timeline.timeline control. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, this is, I know why this exploded. It's because the namespace is timeline uh, global dot. Is that how you do this? Is it just one? Uh, oh, I forget how to access global. Uh, global dot. Oh. Okay, so what's happening right now is I have a class named timeline and I have a namespace named timeline. See, this is namespace timeline. So um, the way to fix this should be by accessing global. 
Okay, global clone clone. Cool beans, it uses C style. Okay. We can do C style. Uh. Okay. So, um,. This is a particular special case that I'm having to do to fix things. But we are now at time. Um, but my thing builds, and it probably runs. And it doesn't do a whole lot. But we'll go ahead and run it, because I didn't run it last time. Uh, so we'll end this one by uh, waiting for the diagnostic tools to start up and give us all of our fancy information. As Microsoft Visual Studio collects information about blah, blah, blah stuff. OK, here's our timeline program. Here are our add event stuff that don't do anything yet. Here's our file that doesn't do a whole lot yet. But, you know, we can resize it, and it resizes things. So that's cool, right? Um, you also note that it doesn't actively resize. It resizes when we finish. I want to do that because that minimizes how much redrawing it has to do while resize, uh, which can potentially do, like, make things laggy or whatever. So it's just a good idea to do it once. You'll also note if we do this, we can go A, and it brings that up, or we can go Alt F, X, and it closes it. Okay, well, that wraps up this episode. So take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh, as soon as I hit the stop recording button. Bye-bye.